Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of running backs who are hoping for plenty of touches to come their way. It's Todd Gurley's Rams going up against Ezekiel Elliott's Cowboys. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and Mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. A moment ago, here was the scene with the Cowboys emerging from their tunnel. It was loud. It's still loud. We're ready for football as the Cowboys get set to match up with the Los Angeles Rams. Hi again, folks. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And as we all know, Charles, offenses today, they're driven by the passing attack. But Larry highlighted in the open a couple of running backs who might just disagree with that assessment. Yeah, and sometimes, occasionally, you get a game where running backs will match each other, kind of carry for carry on opposite teams. But for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get? And can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, ten touchbacks. They're workhorses. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Dallas Cowboys taking the field, coming off that loss last week to Denver. And for Dak Prescott, Charles, first loss for him outside of the NFC East. He was 10-0 with a touchdown-to-interception ratio of 19-1 to in those games. <laughs> the NFC East thing is one thing because we know how tough it is to win games in that division. But what was that ratio again in interceptions? 19-1 to outside of the NFC East until that game last week. Wow, that just tells you how good the Broncos' defense is because Dak takes care of the football so well. He just doesn't turn it over. They got two picks against him. One of them returned for 103 yards and a touchdown by Aqib Tlaib. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. The offensive starters now for the Cowboys. The trademark of the Cowboys offense is balance. They start with the running game, the number two running team in the NFL in 2016. And while the number 23 passing number may give some cause for alarm, don't look at it that way. They run the ball so well and so effectively that when they do decide to throw the football, it often results in big plays downfield. On second down, Elliott. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. For Ezekiel Elliott last week against Denver, arguably his worst game as a pro. Nine carries, just eight yards. And the standard that he sets is so much higher, not just in the yardage, but in how he plays. Because one of the things about him coming out of Ohio State was how hard he played the game, even if the ball wasn't in his hands. And that was not that type of a game that he had against Denver. Let's see if he can bounce back moving forward, because you know Dallas wants to feed him the football and control the game with his running. A first down carry by Elliott. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. Make no mistake about it, the L.A. Rams are loaded with talent on defense, and they're led by their front four, especially defensive tackle Aaron Donald and defensive end Robert Quinn. They finished number nine overall in total defense in 2016, and now they have a new head coach and new defensive staff. They figure if they're not in the top five, they've had a disappointing year. They'll run with Elliott. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Elliott last year is so darn good, over 1,600 yards, most in the NFL. It, actually, there were 10 teams that didn't rush for as many yards as he did. That's how good he was. And just think, there is a place for him to get better. And I think it's in pass receiving, not necessarily the hands, but just throwing it to him more, getting him into open space. He can make even more big plays doing that. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. 
You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it, and that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Now the seventh-year man, Chris Jones, on to kick. Deep for the Rams, Tavon Austin. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Jared Goff leading the L.A. Rams out there. And Charles, week one looked good. First career 300-yard game in the win over the Colts. Did throw a costly pick to end the game against the Redskins last week. But you do see development in him, don't you? I mean, think about last year when he didn't play for most of the season. Got his time in at the end of the year coaching change right the season was lost but he's been the guy from day one with the brand new head coach Sean McVay and I think his development is coming along nicely yeah he threw the interception but this is a kid that they believe they can build around now the first carry here for Todd Gurley and he'll be taken down here at about the 23 yard line Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And the offensive starters here for Los Angeles. Sometimes just a simple change in scenery, and I think Robert Woods is counting on that. Coming back from Buffalo. Now he's back in Los Angeles where he played at USC and had an All-American season there at wide receiver. He expects to be one of the main targets for Jared Goff going forward. Another carry now for Gurley. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. And a look at the defense for the Cowboys. The Cowboys' defense is characterized by its cohesiveness. When you look at them position by position, you're not often impressed. But when you play together collectively, as the Cowboys did in 2016, you find a defense that ranked number one against the run and were a tough team to solve for everyone who tried to move the ball against them. Now gone. And that is incomplete. My dad used to tell me all the time when you're going ready to play a big time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. It's Johnny Hecker now, an all pro three of the last four years on to punt as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Gets past one man. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game. All right, in baseball, I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. They start on the ground with Elliott. <laughs> And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That good for 19 at a first down. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses, those exact type of runs. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. 
That was a really nice play. Be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front. Great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely. Kept him to just a one yard gain. A second down throw for Prescott. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. Dak finding his tight end. Witten and the Cowboys have a first down. The numbers for Dak as a rookie last year are still kind of mind-boggling. You look at QB rating. Dak was 104.9. Now, among full-time quarterbacks, only two Super Bowl quarterbacks, Matt Ryan and Tom Brady, were higher. And look who he finished ahead of. Guys like Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Russell Wilson. Amazing. Prescott, and he finds his target, Terrence Williams. And he is knocked down from the side, right around the 31. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Throwing. Prescott. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. This is Alfred Morris, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Second down, Prescott. They bring him down. Aaron Donald in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack, but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. Thank you. 
They'll need a big play here. Will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack? It's third and long. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. He dumps off to Morris. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And the Cowboys will call on Dan Bailey here. are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. After the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Speaking of Todd Gurley, 88 yards rushing in week two. That was his best since week 14 of his rookie season. The Rams retooled their offensive line. They got Andrew Whitworth from Cincinnati to be a real building block as a left tackle. I think that's going to give Todd Gurley more confidence when he does run the football. I think we'll see much more of the rookie year Todd Gurley in 2017 than we did last season where just about every run it felt like he was met in the backfield. Gurley again here on first down. He showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Last year, Gurley, 74% of L.A.'s carries. That's the highest percentage in the league. But no real payoff because they finished 31st in the league in rushing. I think as a team, they ran for 78 yards per game. They had a 1,000-yard receiver and Kenny Britt out wide, but they really didn't scare people downfield. And because of that, they stacked the line of scrimmage and stuffed the run game. down this is Gurley and he'll go down right around the 47 this time two yards on the pick up there but it's enough to give him a new set of downs well they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter so the run moves the chains and here we go on first down Brown and he'll be knocked down sideways at the 49 give him a couple on the carry there second and eight Jalen Smith Jalen Smith I gotta have some enthusiasm for this young man who missed his whole rookie year because of a knee injury in college to see him back on the field making plays that's exciting it is and the good news for him still just 22 years old so hopefully a long bright future ahead of him they'll try the air now with golf and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. 
It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. Goff now looks to throw, and they'll set up the screen to Gurley. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. The Rams dead last in the NFL last year on third down conversions, just 32%, but they come through there. They've got a much better chance of that number rising this year for a variety of factors. Of course, they're going to get their quarterback, Jared Goff, going. But the big part is, last season, they were really a one-trick pony on offense. Now they'll be much more varied under new head coach Sean McVay. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. It's a three-point game here early. We're back to Arlington in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. to the ground game here. Gurley. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Play action with Gurley. Now Goff. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Sean Lee. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where's he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense... They're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> They'll start the drive with Elliott. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. A loss of a full three yards. And now it's second down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL. And a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college... They were safeties. They moved him up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. Prescott now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Third and long for Prescott. And this is going to be incomplete.
Out now comes the Cowboys punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Rams will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. And our attention shifts to Todd Gurley. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. 17 yards is the pick up there for number 17. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Here's Goff now on second down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. On third down, that's Brown. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Shedding the tackler, and it gives him some room. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 18 yards there and a first down. That's why he loved the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Back to the ground, this time with Gurley. Flash the stick skills on that run, but then stop shy of the 35. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. stopped immediately there no gain on the play that time and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four 
Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. going to get this one down to the 30. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. Offense. And that'll set them back five. Still second down. Second down, here's Goff. His throw incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. And that'll make it third down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. The Rams on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Out of the gun. Gone. And he'll be grabbed from behind and slung down like a rag doll. Malik Collins in there to drop it for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. How much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. On now is the big leg of Greg Zerline. He has hit from as far as 61 away in his career. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. A 
first down throw for Prescott. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Bryant. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Six yards down to the 13. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And out of bounds all the way down at the two-yard line. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Great footwork there, Charles, to dot the I, stay in bounds, get both feet in. He's probably thinking, though, man, I made a catch like that that close to the end zone. I should have scooped Yeah, there's always a regret when you're that close to the goal line. But let's go back to what you talked about before, getting his feet down. Would you say dotting the I? Mm -hmm. I can cross the T as well. That was excellent footwork to get in bounds and make a great catch. And the head coach reaches for the red flag, tosses it down on the field. He wants a challenge here. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. going to do it as he stopped at the two-yard line. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. So stuff from the two, now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? Play action? Definitely. Let him get outside and create, and if he has to run it, he has a little bit more space. They'll try again with Elliott. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This offense so far on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now Prescott. Blitz coming and down he goes. Alec Ogletree in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. 
So three points is the outcome, but probably not what they're looking for given the drive that they were on. Yeah, things were looking good. You had it first and goal, but then the offense sputters a bit, and they're forced to settle for a field goal. For the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Our eyes shift to the defense of the Cowboys now. And yeah, they got to be feeling good about forcing that long missed field goal the last go around. And you know what upsets a kicker more than anything? is missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know they're taking full credit. Yep, we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker is able to get his confidence back as well. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Give him four yards on the play, and that will lead us into the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, we'll send you to Orlando and Larry Ridley as he'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. But no touchdowns. These guys need to give Larry some touchdowns to talk about. Things are too easy for him right now back in the studio. Come on, guys. Help the man out. Give him something to talk about. Second down following the run. A shotgun snap for gone. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. And now the Cowboys are going to call another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And let's gaze our attention on Ezekiel Elliott. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. They'll 
run it now out of the gun. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. The best play callers in any league know how to break their tendencies. They study themselves, they self-scout, and they realize most of the time you don't call a draw play on first and ten. So every so often you insert that play just to make the defense think, even if it's not successful. from the gun and this one complete to Winton over the middle and he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24 yard line the reception good for seven it's third down not a big window to throw coverage wasn't too bad there yeah they had him under wraps pretty well but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball the Cowboys on third down not good 0 for 4 thus far this will be third and six from the shotgun, it's Prescott. Throwing for his running back, and he's got it complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Fresh set of downs here. Here's Prescott. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So a couple of field goals, that's all we've been able to muster through two quarters of play. 6-0 is our count at the break. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Both the Cowboys and the Rams are having some trouble moving the ball through the air. The yardage totals are low, and that's helped play into what was a low-scoring first half. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. Cowboys on offense, first quarter winding down. Defense will win the battle and get the sack. This will go for a loss of eight. Now third and eight. Goff's going to find his mark, and he'll be tackled at the 41-yard line. He's got the sack here. This ends up as a loss of nine. So that's a wrap for us. We'll head back now to AT&T Stadium for the start of the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. 
They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. The third quarter starts with a run by Gurley. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. From the gun, here's gone. Right side complete, that's Woods. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one goes for 24 yards. It's lining up first and ten. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, the free safety was there, no gain. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. The Rams on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and nine. Now gone. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. throw it and Beasley with it over the middle and they're able to bring him down at the 20 five yards on the catch there brings up second down when you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage A 
A second down throw for Prescott. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Cowboys on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on here to punt it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Here's Austin. They'll call that a punt at 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Off play action. Here's Goff. And his throw here is incomplete. Derek Carrier, the one he was looking for. And it's third and short. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Rams on third down, three for seven so far in this game. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So it'll be first down here after the run. They go play action here on first down. And he'll find his target, Woods. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. down only to about the 46. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Hey. 
see if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it here with Brown. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different, try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. The Rams on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and nine. Now a play fake, and it's gone. And he's going to be swallowed. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Steven Paya in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been terrific so far. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Dallas gets set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Second down, Prescott. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. The Cowboys on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This will be third and five. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And he finds his man, that's Butler. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. This is Elliott. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Again, it's Elliott. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. 
And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Here's Prescott. Complete to Jason Witten. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. There's a little attrition setting in with this drive because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Prescott on first down. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Prescott now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and 11. Prescott now. Room here to run. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Now Elliott. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys with the football. They'll be looking to tack onto their lead as we get set for the fourth. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Now Prescott. Trying to drop one in, but it's incomplete. Des Bryant, the intended receiver, and it's third and four. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. Three out, three out. 
Prescott on third and goal. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. It's picked up a live ball here, remember. Love the effort there. I mean, to get a field goal block in this situation because they knew what was going on. They give up those three points there. It's now a two-possession game. Yeah, that really changes the complexion here in the second half, doesn't it? It really does. And now you give your team a more than a fighting chance and a little momentum. Terrific job by them setting the tone and picking up their defense. Incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley. And now it's second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. There's Goff. And got him in. It's Woods. And he's going to get this one all the way up to the 30. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Even though this offense doesn't have a single point to its name, they're not totally out of this game yet. A touchdown here, they could be in business. And how about that last play? Now they've got momentum going, so you know I'm a big advocate. Get back on the line of scrimmage. Throw another play out of while you've got them rocked on their heels. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a first down throw, gone. Throw left side complete. That's Reynolds. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. down it's gone he'll let it fly for Austin so they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect and you just know when that play call came in their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield that's a lot of fun and they missed an opportunity so they're still at the original line of scrimmage here second down and ten Oh, 
Again, golf. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Rams on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and ten. Goff throwing again. And this is going to be caught along the sideline. Nicely done, but right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. So at the start of this game, it looked like the defense was wearing him down a little bit. Now you look at the numbers, that's kind of flip. Yeah, I agree with you totally. And his offensive line has really started to play well. And the best offensive line coaches that I've ever talked to, when they have great runners, you know what they tell their guys? Relax, you don't have to be perfect. Get as many guys as you can, but if you leave one free, the great runner will either make him miss or go through him. So don't worry about that. Don't You don't have to be so precise. Just go ahead, block some people, try and create some room, and allow him to go to work. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So here we go, first and ten now. Play fake here on first down. And some room to maneuver. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. That one goes for 24 yards. For that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first and ten, Prescott. Looking downfield for Dez. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Dez Bryant, 42 yards. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. So they're going to go for two. They'll let Elliott try and run it in. And he's going to go down right at the line of scrimmage. The defense left him with nowhere to go, and the try for two is denied. Defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench.
Bailey now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. Dances by him. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. getting set to go now and right now these guys they're shuffling a little bit maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away yes yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit asking a lot of questions what are you seeing what are you getting maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive and he's taken down but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. They give him a gain of 38. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Golf on first down. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And now a first down following that long gain. From the red zone now, Golf. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was a type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Second and ten, golf. His throw caught at about the five. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Someone, and in this case, he had the play, they just didn't complete it. Watkins alone on the left side, throwing again is gone. This will be caught at about the six. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. If you're a wide receiver and they call a screen pass, you're counting on some people being out in front of you blocking. 
But that play was well diagnosed by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. And they got there and swarmed and finished off the play. Six here. It's third and goal. Now gone. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Sammy Watkins from four yards out. And the Rams have got this back to a one-score game. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. The Rams' defense getting ready to go again. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll make it a second down. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Call it a gain of a couple and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Prescott to throw it. And down on the pressure from the Rams defense. Mark Barron in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he spins through. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Getting set to go again here on offense. Jared Goff trots back onto the field. He's had quite the turnaround, Charles, at the start of the game. Passing game was a little bit of a mess, but he's back on the horse, so to speak. Love seeing how someone can rebound from a slow start or a tough start. Means that they're strong mentally. They've kind of calmed themselves down. Everyone's rallied around them. Maybe they even changed game planning a little bit in order to make things better for him. They go play action here on first down. He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Jeff Heath. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners, who've had the receivers on lockdown. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was pump the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you'd think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Prescott looks to throw on first. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. So the offense has it first and 10. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Jeff Swain, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call tippy toes if that one was completed. A second down throw for Prescott. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. The reception good for seven. It's third down. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. They'll throw again. Prescott. He completes it to Bryant. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Prescott finding his big receiver, Bryant, there for a Cowboy first down. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. And the offense here just looking to stay in bounds, complete the short passes, and put this game on ice. A first down carry by Elliott. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Able to stay in bounds, and the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in, and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break in the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. 
They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Well, they got the yardage they needed there, picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understanding where they are in the field? And here comes play number six on this drive. Throwing here, Prescott. This is caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. to throw and this is caught for the moment it's a touchdown but multiple flags down so let's sort this out Late game, that hurts. Take the touchdown off the board. No doubt about it. And this is where you make a great movie scene, right? Go in, rally the team. Okay, we lost points there. Let's get it back and go out and score again. Can he get it done? So backed up to the six now. Third and goal. They run with Morris. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. And the Rams are going to go ahead and take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. All right, so the timeout over, and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that now makes this a 15-7 game. So, Charles, I think from a defensive perspective, you have to look at that field goal there and consider it a win. You were able to keep them within a touchdown, so no question about it. That was the kind of stand that keeps you in ball games. To the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. 
Jared Goff for the Rams headed back onto the field. Now this is a spot where you can learn a lot about a young quarterback. And that's why they brought him into the organization. Because you don't just bring them in strictly for their talents. You think that they have that something special in them that will allow them to function in these types of situations. Now it's time for them to be clinical and not emotional. You know your play sequence. You know what has to get done. Get the ball to the right people. Get out of bounds and get it downfield and try and score. And he's trying to earn his stripes here for a winning drive. They'll look to throw. This is complete to Watkins on the slam. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Back to throw. He's got a man that's caught left sideline. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Personal foul. Face man. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. receiver Tavon Austin and that'll bring up second down so this is what happens when you throw interceptions that confident veneer that you have is chipped away a little bit maybe a little bit gun shy throwing it around yeah under throwing him there and you're right those interceptions may be in the back of his mind second down now after the incompletion the option to the short side left stepping up he's going to keep it he'll get five out of the keeper but now it's third down they'll get to the line here but remember it's also third down he'll look to throw dumps it off to Gurley and he's able to work it here to the eight yard line call it a gain of five and that's going to bring up a fourth down Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. Everyone gears up for third down, talks about the importance of it. But fourth down, that's truly the moment of truth play, isn't it? Everything's dialed up a little bit more. And, it, you know, it's such a momentum play, isn't it? Absolutely, because it can flip either way depending on who converts on fourth down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They start on the ground with Elliott. And able to find a little space, he gets this up over the 15 to the 16. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside.
One final kneel down here, and that should just about do it. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington.